Good afternoon, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller, and I am president of the club. For the last 98 years, the City Club has provided a forum for speakers to discuss a broad range of significant topics of the day. And so it is with today's speaker, Jeff Johnson, an award-winning journalist, social activist, and political commentator. He was named by Source Magazine as one of Hip Hop Generation's key political players and has been dubbed the conscience voice of black entertainment television. Although he has traveled the world and currently lives in Baltimore, he is a native of Cleveland Heights and attended the University of Toledo where he was president of the student body and the black student union. He has spent the last decade merging the worlds of politics and popular culture including his work as Senior Advisor for Media and Youth Outreach for People for the American Way, National Director of the Youth and College Division of the NAACP, and an appointment by Russell Simmons as the Vice President of the Hip Hop Summit Action Network. In 2004, upon recognizing his socio-political influence and media adeptness, network exec executives at BET offered Johnson a unique opportunity to present his views to the hip-hop generation nationally through a consistent media vehicle. Thus, Rap City's cousin Jeff was born. Shortly thereafter, Johnson began producing his own show, The Jeff Johnson Chronicles. The Chronicles addressed issues relevant to young people in urban America. His long list of activities include testifying before Congress on the recovery after Hurricane Katrina and he was the only American reporter to receive an exclusive post-inauguration interview with Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Africa's first elected female head of state and Liberia's first elected female president. He was also one of only two news correspondents to receive an exclusive interview with Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir, who had not granted interviews with American media outlets for 13 years. In 2008, he won the NABJ Salute to Excellence Award for BET series Life and Death in Darfur, Jeff Johnson reports. Mr. Johnson regularly contributes commentary and analysis about issues related to race, politics, popular culture, and socioeconomics for news broadcasts and publications such as MSNBC's Dayside and Hardball with Chris Matthews, CNN Headline News, Larry King Live, Fox News channels, and others. He also serves as a commentator on the nationally syndicated Tom Joyner Morning Show every Tuesday and served as managing editor and chief correspondent for The Truth with Jeff Johnson, BET's hard-hitting talk show. His consulting firm, Jeff Nation, works with individuals and institutions to empower urban communities globally. A recent honor is his selection by the British Council as one of 30 young leaders joining together from Europe and America to be part of its transatlantic 2020 team to begin a new cross-border dialogue to reinvigorate traditional alliances and mend transatlantic shifts, rifts. Mr. Johnson speaks frequently, and some of his positions have drawn controversy, such as when he endorsed Kenneth Blackwell in Ohio, the Ohio gubernatorial race in 2006. Blackwell had served as Ohio Secretary of State in 2004 when several well-documented voting irregularities occurred in Ohio. Mr. Johnson's accomplishments also include his first book entitled, Everything I'm Not Made Me Everything I Am. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jeff Johnson. Thank you so much and good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon is normally a, a phrase that you respond to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It uh, is a fantastic honor and privilege to be at the City Club. This is the second opportunity that I've had to speak here. And, you know, I find it interesting when you introduce someone in a venue in Ohio, uh, how polarizing it can be right before you're done to say that you supported Kenneth Blackwell. Uh, so I, I appreciate the accuracy of, of, my, of my resume. Um, you know, th this is uh, very interesting for me because the amount of time that I have to present this afternoon is normally the amount of time that I take to do introductions uh, at many of my lectures. And so it's important for me to acknowledge a few people. I want to acknowledge my mother and my aunt who never find it uh, impossible 
to come and support me when I'm in the area. Hey, Mom. <laughs> hey, Auntie. Um, I want to recognize Ned Hill from Cleveland State University, the Levin School, where I sit uh, on the visiting committee and appreciate him taking the time out of his schedule. I um, want to thank Ms. Moreski, uh, whose daughter and I went to middle school together, uh, and she came to support. And many of you that I know out there um, who I've gone to school with, uh, but most of all, I want to thank the young people um, from many high schools uh, who are in the back. Uh, I think, how many of you are there? Six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eric, if you wouldn't mind, y'all come take these seats up front. All right? Eric, we'll take you up. <laughs> I, th I think it's important anytime there are young people in the room that we make sure they understand how important they are to the future of the work that we do. So y'all come on. Come on, come on, come on. Give them a round of applause. The, the topic that I want to speak from this afternoon um, is is race or raggedy. And while normally this would be, I think, a subject matter um, that I would discuss in a room that was predominantly that of people of color, um, I think it's very interesting that the first time I give this lecture, uh, it will be in a room that is predominantly not of color. And the, the notion of race or raggedy speaks to the question is the problems or are the problems that the African-American community in particular are facing in cities like Cleveland and Newark, in Harlem or in Atlanta, primarily the byproduct of institutional racism? Or is it a byproduct of the fact that many of these communities have failed to develop effective institutions, have not uh, mobilized and built on the successes of the civil rights movement, have not provided visionary or effective leadership? And so I almost feel um, like a traitor having this conversation in a room with fewer African Americans. But as people are watching this, this uh, and listening to it on the radio, um, I hope that they will email, I hope that they will respond, and I hope that we can have a healthy discourse even here. Because the election of President Barack Obama has created a very interesting phenomenon. We have heard the word race more than we have associated with any other president, but talked about it less than we have under any other administration. And so people continue to use the word race or post-racial America or ask why President Obama should or should not have a black agenda. But there is still not a fundamental, pragmatic conversation about what race in America actually means. Because we, as we look at this country, there are very few countries, save South Africa, that have race as such a polarizing piece of the foundation of its modern political and social infrastructure. But in America, we are probably more, we are less likely to have legitimate discussion about one, what does race mean to us? Two, how has race affected? how we communicate with each other, the institutions that we're a part of, the development of the, of the communities that we live in, and the future of the society that we want to be a part of. And even more interesting, I think, is the reality that uh, Eric Holder, our Attorney General, mentioned when he first came into his position, which I think was misquoted over and over again, that Americans had traditionally and historically been cowards as it related to race. And Eric Holder didn't say that white Americans had traditionally been cowards about race or black Americans or Latino Americans or Asian Americans. He said Americans because he clearly understood that even as there was an African-American president coming into office and there were buzzwords being used like post-racial, 